Hey, I'm Daniel from Ratings.com. Today we're testing the LG 32 UL950, which is also advertised with a dash W suffix to denote the white color. It's a 32 inch 4K monitor with an IPS panel, and it includes some neat features like FreeSync support and a wide color gamut for HDR, although it only has a 60 hertz refresh rate. In this review, we will start by looking at the design and inputs of the monitor, and then move on to the picture quality. We'll also look at the motion handling and input lag. We'll be closely comparing this monitor with the Dell UltraSharp U3219Q, as well as the ultrawide 5K monitor from LG, the 34WK95U, and the gaming Acer Predator X27. So we'll start with the design. Like most other LG monitors, the UL950 has a metallic crescent-shaped stand. It supports the monitor well, with only a relatively small amount of wobble, which is good. The stand also has some ergonomic adjustments, as you can adjust the height, rotate the monitor to portrait, or tilt it from back to front. Note that you can't easily swivel it from side to side without moving the whole stand. There is also a quick release to remove the stand to access the Visa 100x100 100 100 mounting bracket, which is great, especially for those who plan to mount the monitor side by side with another. The borders are also thin, which looks good without much gap. The build quality of the monitor also feels good, with a solid stand and no loose parts around the monitor's plastic exterior. The monitor does include a 19.5 volt power brick, which plugs into the rear of the monitor. It is quite large, so you may need to consider the placement of this if you care about a tidy desk. On the rear of the monitor, close to the power connection, is a good range of inputs, including a DisplayPort connection, an HDMI connection, and two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports. One of these USB 3 ports can daisy chain a 4K 60Hz image to a second display, and the other supports power delivery up to 60 watts, which is just enough for most MacBook Pros. The controls are located under the front of the display. The single joystick is easy to use and provides good tactile feedback. Now on to the picture quality. Like most LG monitors, the 32UL950 has an IPS panel, which provides accurate colors when viewed off-axis. This means that the sides of the screen remain accurate when viewed from directly in front, which is good for a uniform and accurate image. The vertical viewing angles are also great and shouldn't present any issues. Now on to the brightness. A high peak brightness in SDR is useful to overcome glare in a bright room, and this monitor is one of the brightest we've tested, which is great. With local dimming enabled, some smaller objects in dark scenes get dimmed, which we'll talk about later. When sending an HDR signal, the monitor can get the whole screen a bit brighter at almost 700 nits, but this is only sustained for a few seconds and is likely just to reach Visa's Display HDR 600 spec. On our real scene test pattern, the brightness of a small object is closer to 400 nits, which is decent, but won't really make HDR highlights stand out. For those in a bright room, good reflection handling is important to avoid distracting glare. The performance of this LG is good and is in the same ballpark as most other monitors, so is unlikely to be an issue. Now for those in a dark room, a high contrast ratio is important to deliver deep dark scenes. Unfortunately, the 32UL950 only has a decent contrast ratio, so blacks do appear grey. This is typical of monitors with IPS panels and is in the same ballpark as these other comparable monitors. Now, this LG monitor does have local dimming to improve the dark scene performance. Unfortunately though, it doesn't work well, as the zones extend vertically across the whole screen. This means that whole vertical columns of the screen need to be darker for local dimming to have any effect, so the contrast ratio measured on our checkerboard pattern doesn't change. Another important factor for those in a dark room is the uniformity of dark scenes. This does vary between units depending on manufacturing tolerances, but the monitor that we bought has very obvious flash lighting near the right hand side of the bottom edge. If you buy this model, then please do let us know how yours is or send us a photo. Now for the color accuracy. The monitor is fairly accurate out of the box, but none of the default picture modes, including the sRGB picture mode, follow our sRGB gamma target very well. This is strange, as the monitor does come with a factory calibration report, but even our color temperature measurements differ from the factory report by about 400 kelvins. Overall, this is fine for most people, but for those who care about really accurate colors, the Dell U3219Q is one of the most accurate monitors we've tested out of the box. Now onto the HDR color gamut. 
This LG monitor also supports HDR10, which is good for those who plan to game or watch movies in HDR. A wide color gamut is useful for HDR, as the HDR10 format allows for a wider range of colors, so the monitor's gamut should be as wide as possible to display them accurately. Unlike most monitors, the 32UL950 does support a wide color gamut, which is good. However, at about 77% of the DCI-P3 color space, it isn't as good as the 34WK95U or the Predator X27. Another important aspect of the picture quality is the gradient performance. Smooth display of gradients is good for those working with photos or videos, and for gamers that want the best picture quality free from banding. Thankfully, this LG offers excellent performance here with the ability to display smooth 10-bit gradients. Now for the motion handling. Unfortunately, the 32UL950 is limited to a 60Hz maximum refresh rate, which is low for gamers. It is fine for editing documents or watching videos, but does result in higher input lag and more persistence blur, as we'll talk about later. This monitor does support FreeSync variable refresh rates, though, which is useful to reduce screen tearing when gaming. Unfortunately, it is limited to a range of 40 to 60 FPS. We also tested the variable refresh rate support from our NVIDIA GTX 1060 graphics card and found that it does work as long as FreeSync is set to the ultimate range. You can see more about our tests of FreeSync compatibility with NVIDIA graphics cards at our link down below. This monitor has a fast response time, so only a short blur trail is seen behind our moving logo. Note that most of this blur is from persistence due to the refresh rate of 60 Hz. These slight duplications in the logo image are a result of PWM flicker of the backlight, which is unavoidable for this monitor when reducing the backlight below maximum. This may be a problem for those who are sensitive to the 240 Hz flicker or find it distracting. We measured the response time of the four different overdrive settings, which can be found under the response time option in the monitor menu. Off has no overshoot, but is a bit slower, resulting in a bit more blur. Normal has a faster response time for less blur, but again, with no visible overshoot, so is our recommended setting. The fast and faster settings each add more overshoot, which can be visible as a slight halo around fast moving objects. Overall, this is a very good result, but isn't as good as the Predator X27, which has no PWM flicker and a faster response time with less motion blur. Now, as mentioned before, the input lag of this monitor is limited by the 60 Hz refresh rate. This is because the image scans from top to the bottom 60 times each second, so the bottom of the screen is refreshed about 1 60th of a second after the top, or about 16.6 milliseconds later. We measure the average input lag at the center of the screen, which is theoretically limited at 60 Hz to about 8.5 milliseconds. This monitor only has a small amount of processing on top of this, resulting in our input lag of about 9 milliseconds. This is still very good and shouldn't be an issue for most people, but competitive gamers will prefer a monitor with a faster refresh rate and lower input lag like the Predator X27. So overall, the 32UL950 is a very good monitor, especially for office use or working with photos and videos. It offers a high resolution screen and accurate colors at an angle. If you've got a laptop that supports Thunderbolt 3, then you can use a single USB-C cable to charge your laptop and drive two 4K screens. Compared to the Dell U3219Q, both monitors offer very similar picture quality and overall performance. The Dell has a slightly better stand, which allows it to swivel, but the LG supports daisy-chaining the video signal to drive another display. If you don't care about either of these features, then go with the cheaper one. The 34WK95U is an ultra-wide monitor with about 5,000 horizontal pixels, which is sometimes called a 5K resolution. These two monitors do offer similar performance otherwise though, except that the WK doesn't support FreeSync. Go for the 34WK95U if you like the ultra-wide resolution, or the 32UL950 if you prefer the traditional 4K UHD format. The Predator X27 is a high-end monitor with more gaming-oriented features. The design reflects this, as well as the higher refresh rate and lower input lag. If you're a gamer and can afford it, then the X27 is a better monitor, but it comes at a high price. So that's it. What do you think of this LG monitor? Have you bought it? And if so, how will you use it? Let us know in the comments. You can check out all of our measurements on our website. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become a contributor. Thank you for watching and see you next time.